Hello, hello, Mordimers here and welcome back to the Prague Chess Festival 2020. Today I would like to show you the game from round 8. And so far Vidit Gujarati uh, is leading and he is one point ahead from the other players. So uh, he won with Samuel Shankland if you are interested. Very interesting attack, you can click over there and um, watch later. And also he won against Alireza Firuzia, very important um, win. And, and yeah, and he is leading. So all he needs in the eighth round, because we have nine rounds, so all he needs now is the draw. And um, Vidit Gujarati is the player from India. He is 25 years old and his ranking is 2721. And it gives him 26th place in the world, according to the feeder list. And he play as white. And his opponent is David Navara from Czechia, 34 years old. And uh, his ranking 2717, uh, 28th player in the world. So without further ado, let's jump into the game. White opens with d4, we have knight f6, c4, e6, knight f3 and b6, uh, queen's Indian defense on the board. And the most popular line here is g3 uh, and then bishop on a6 attacking this uh, c4 pawn as um, this bishop is gonna go on g2. So um, b3 actually is, um, is, is forced and then bishop on b4 with check, that's the most popular line. And we did not like probably this line, so he played just a3. So now uh, bishop can't come on b4. We have bishop on b7, bishop on f4, uh, very beautiful diagonal for this bishop. And now in some lines, this knight can actually jump to the c7 that's that would be some threat and a very similar uh, idea was in the game against sam shankland so i really recommend uh, to see that game uh, but here we have d5 c takes on d5 and black can take by the pawn or by the knight um, david navara choose the knight so knight on d5 we have bishop on g3 as the bishop was under attack knight d7 and here Vidi toad for some time and he chose to play e4. So maybe not uh, his preparation. He was thinking uh, if he want to go for this line. Uh, knight from uh, fifth rank goes to f6 as, as knight is under attack. And then we have e5 attacking the, the knight. And this knight has to choose where to go. So knight e4 looks the most promising as the knight would be um, defended. And also if attacked uh, always can be up the bishop so uh, that would be uh, pretty okay but navara go for a uh, knight on h5 also attacking this bishop and can of course exchange uh, when needed um if white want to you know for example hide the bishop then of course it would be taken for now a knight is um quite okay on h5 and it can't be attacked very easily uh, we have knight on c3 by Vidit, bishop on e7 and bishop on c4. Uh, so now preparing d5 and here we have a6. a6 take away the, um, the square uh, from the, um, for example, from the knight and knight actually could attack the c7 and um, the problem is that Navara uh, he said in an interview that he underestimated d5 move and this is what we did play d5 and here the best continuation for black would be knight on c5 defending this pawn on e6 so a b4 would kick this but now uh, black would have attack on d5 so it takes on d5 now bishop takes on d5 bishop takes on d5 knight takes on d5 and then knight can move on e6 and that would be very very um, equal position black would just castle white would just castle and the game would continue with this advance um, e5 pawn however uh, in this position navara play e takes on d5 so he tried to okay i'm gonna remove this um, this e6 pawn i don't want any weakness here 
Um, and yeah, I think he just take on d5. We have bishop takes on d5 and then knight takes on g3, removing defender of the pawn on e5. We have h takes on g3. Uh, and here this bishop is under attack. So um, black should do something about that. And again, uh, white stands uh, slightly better here. Knight on c5 again is the best continuation. Uh, this time bishop on b7 and then black would have the chance actually to exchange the pieces, the queens and then knight on b7 and white stands uh, a bit better better but uh, black would still have the uh, for example castle op option and uh, th that would be pretty okay uh, however here we have another inaccuracy c6 uh, and c6 actually it's the move which caused Vidit to think for 21 minutes very very long thinking and he has a lot of good moves here. He can move the, the bishop on e4, he can move the bishop on c4, can move on e a2, and all these moves are, are pretty good. However, uh, he play actually the best move um, in this position and he sacrifice on f7 check. And uh, Vidit is not the person who sacrifice, you know, uh, like intuitive, um, by intuitive way he calculate everything very precisely and this is why he spent a lot a lot of time uh, we have king on f7 and now e6 with check so um bringing the king even deeper of course uh king can't go back i mean can but then the the pawn takes and the the knight and then white stand much much better so king has to takes on e6 and here we have another 17 uh, minutes by vidit uh, and he found the move queen on e2 with check and that's actually the best move in the position uh, and and here navara have the choices have to move the king somehow the best idea for him is a king on d6 but uh, but i will show you why he didn't choose this king on d6 navara had to calculate um, these lines so for example knight on d4 and now if king uh, goes to um, c7 then of course we would have the fork on the king and the queen so that's unplayable so that's the first thing so uh he would have to play something else for example knight on f8 now defending this um e6 and then after the the uh, queenside castle king c7 is possible but but now knight on e6 uh, still forking so uh black has to of course take this um this knight and now rook on d8 takes the queen rook a on d8 uh, and now queen takes on uh, e6 so that would be the position which um, david navara probably didn't like white are slightly better but it's not like you know um winning very winning position it's it's better but white still would have to prove what to play the other moves uh, he would have to consider after king on d6 he would have to also um, consider rook on d1 with check and that would be maybe less crazy with more balanced material but also king on c7 and now knight on e5 attacking the the knight and now the only move for black which still keep black in the game is it's actually sacrificing this this bishop on d6 uh, and, and it looks like uh, it doesn't make any sense, but it's important tempo and I will show you why. Um, so white of course takes uh, and then the, the rook can't be taken back because of the, of the fork again. Actually, that would be family fork. 
so um, rook on e8 would be have to be played and now rook d7 with check queen d7 knight d7 and now rook on e2 so this was important tempo just to pick up the the queen and now we would have knight on e2 uh, king d7 and rook takes on h7 so this position also uh should have to be you know uh, considered by navara and vidit uh, in their calculations pretty crazy stuff um, however uh, navara didn't like this he chose something which looks uh, not so complicated so king on f7 it's worse move but again it's not easy to calculate uh, what to do now so uh we did of course play um the castle and now all his pieces are very uh, beautiful ready to attack and black pieces actually i'm um, not really happy over there so now white has to attack create some attack we have bishop on f6 it's pretty solid move this is what probably navara had in mind now this bishop controls the the knight so this knight can't really uh, enter easily because this bishop uh, sorry about that this bishop controls this diagonal uh, but now we have knight on e4 attacking this bishop queen e7 and now knight d6 attacking the the king and the bishop uh, so it looks like white gonna win the bishop the problem is this knight actually can't easily uh, get out from there we have king on f8 and now this is the question what to do next what to do next and vd don't really have much time on the clock now and he has to decide if he has more time probably he would not um not play anything else just uh but but he has to calculate a lot a lot of possibilities now the queen exchange the queen or move and if move the queen where to move so queen on c4 it's it's very strong move with um, uh, some mating ideas here and uh, of course not now because the queen is there uh, but also a uh, queen on c2 it's even stronger uh, and all of this has to be calculated a lot of lines uh Vidit probably didn't have much time he thought okay this is now start to uh, be too complicated so queen on e7 is is quite enough for me and after bishop takes on e7 he just took on b7 so he got back um his material we have knight on f6 but now have to do something about that knight we have knight on e5 by Vidit and now it's quite interesting move first uh, it attacks c6 pawn and the second uh, it also attacks g6 with the threat of the fork and of course uh, if the if the knight is taken then rook can attack on h8 so uh, this is pretty pretty strong and navara play absolutely the best move in this position knight on d5 uh, and here actually the knight on g6 which looks very attractive uh it's it's a trap knight on g6 and then it's not really really great king f7 knight um, takes on h8 rook takes on h8 now and and here b4 uh preparing some maybe some space for for the knight uh, otherwise there are no um, uh, better moves and black don't need to be hurry first h6 so um the rook can takes on h7 and after rook on d2 for example um then rook on b8 and black stands better black stands better here so have to be very very careful knight d5 um very nice move and other possibility knights on c6 actually knight on c6 it could be played however it has to be calculated rook on c8 uh, with the pin so now um now th this knight of course can be moved 
Uh, but rook on d5 is playable and after rook on c6 just king b1 and white would stand better uh, however first we did say okay i'm gonna take on c6 uh, but later king b1 first now my king is safe there and that's that's what i'm gonna play nothing complicated so uh, now we have um, rook on c8 uh, defending this c6 of course, if rook attacks the, the knight, then um, white would, would just pick up the c6 pawn and then uh, pick up the knight on d5. So that was not possible. Rook c8 uh, is better in this position. And now white have to decide what to do next. So we did play rook h on e1. So centralizing the, the rooks. Now the rooks are very powerful in the center and Vidit has really really not much time left so Navara tried to complicate the situation he played bishop on a3 and it looks like a trap but actually this trap doesn't work uh, but Vidit had to calculate all of the possibilities so for example if if Vidit say okay I, I don't see that trap and b takes on a3 uh, this trap doesn't really work because after knight on c3, king c2 and knight on d1, uh, simply rook on d1 and white just stand better. This knight can't actually be, be catched because it always can, can move away. Uh, so white would just stand better with the, uh, two crazy uh, knights against the rook. That, that would be much better for white. But we didn't, didn't take the, the bishop, so uh, in this position he just played the best move uh, in position. Knight takes on c6. Uh, and now removing the defender of d5 pawn. So now this knight is, is under attack, yes, but also this bishop is under attack and this knight is under attack. So Navara play bishop on b4 attacking the rook. We have knight takes on b4, knight takes on b4 and now rook on d7. And this is so powerful rook now on the 7th rank. We have h5 making a space for the rook. We did play knight on d6 attacking the rook but also supporting attack on f7. So now rook can attack the king and black of course has to be very very careful rook a8 and um, so moving the rook and now we have rook e on e7 so total domination and actually black could just resign the game there is nothing they can do actually uh, however vidit was very very low on time just just couple of minutes and uh, he in this position has um, still 10 moves to make uh, rook h7 was played, so defending this uh, g7 pawn. And here V did play the best move in the position, knight on e4. Now threatening knight on f6 and attacking the rook. So rook would have to uh, be moved. Uh, and of course it can't be taken because black would also uh, lose the rook. So we have rook on h6 and uh, if rook on e8, that's another possibility, but it also doesn't work. Simply rook on e8 and now king on e8 and the same. Knight on f6 with check and now attacking the king, defending the rook and attacking this rook. So, uh, so very, very powerful move. G takes on f6 and of course white would win the game very easily. So um, this move was, was not considered and rook on h6 was played by Navara. And here we have rook on g7 of course and white totally dominate the position. Uh, and now we have rook on d8. Rook on d8. This is the last resource where Vidit actually um, got just a couple of seconds and he had to make, um, make the move. Uh, and he just panicked. He just panicked in this position where, where he just, you know, is very close even to mating ideas, winning uh, material. All he had to do is first check. This is the best move in the position. Just check the king. Uh, it's, it's always good here. Nothing else can happen. So just check the king. 
And now if king move on e8, the problem is black actually have the mating ideas here. So b3 would solve all the problems and, and this, this would be total game over. Black has totally nothing to do, nothing, like totally nothing. And um, checkmate is coming. So, uh, or, or if not checkmate, then, then the rook would have to take and, and sacrifice. That would be the end of the game. And it looks like obvious move. Everybody can see that. Yeah, correct. But if you have a couple of seconds and you see these mating ideas on D1, you can panic. And we did this very experienced, but, but, he, but it happened in his game. And he just play B3. And B3 is not bad move. Actually, uh, it's just give the another brief for Navarra. Uh, now this rook can be, you know, exchanged and, and all advantage of VD just gone. Uh, he still has better position, but, but you know, uh, his mind probably got, got shattered. So um, very difficult. Now, rook on d7, uh, rook takes on d7 and then a5. So what do we have on the board? White still have advantage. This king uh, is, you know, locked in the, in the eighth rank. White still stand better. So just improve the position and continue playing. Uh, we have f3. Now rook on c6 and now the problem is this rook can actually come to c2 and and then make the problems also on the second rank. So rook on d2 passive position have to be played but now king f7. So now black king can move to the center. We have king on b2 and um, king on e6 knight on c3 rook on d6 offering um, exchange of the uh, of the rooks and there are only two moves to time control so uh vidit can decide he want to you know go for the knight end game or maybe not and it's also another decision to make and keep in mind that um it's enough for him to win this tournament to get a draw. So all he has to do just exchange the pieces and sign the draw. Navara would be happy, Vidit would be happy because he would win the tournament. But Vidit uh, actually play for the win. He got so huge advantage that he he didn't now uh, think you know right way. He thought, okay, it's uh, I I have to win this. Uh, so he didn't play rook on d6 and then let's see what would happen rook on d6 actually king d6 and knight end games it's it's always very very complicated i just a couple of days ago posted the crazy game uh, between Hampi Conero and Alexandra Kosteniuk and it, it was drawish but but it was so crazy that Hampi Conero won that game uh, and here what would happen, uh, all white has to do is move the knight uh, somehow and, and pick up this pawn and it looks very very easy. So knight e2 for example, knight d3 with check, king c3, but now black can go on e1 and attack from behind. So uh, all white can do is knight f4, now attacking the, the h pawn but also defending g2 uh, and now black have b5 king d2 and the knight is trapped so uh what black would do uh, actually a4 is very strong here and white don't have time to pick up the the knight because this pawn would just uh, promote so that would be impossible so king c3 has to be played back and now king on c6 very important move king on c6 if king is played on uh, if king is played on c5 then white actually after exchanging the the pawns would force black to exchange the knights and after the knights are exchanged uh, white actually would be better and and just pick up the, the pawn and the three pawns against one uh, white would probably win uh, so king on c6 would have to be played and after exchanging the pieces pieces 
king on b4 a3 king a3 and now king c5 so uh, coming with the uh, with the king king b3 king d4 and it's totally equal game uh, if knight takes on h5 um, then the knight uh, of course takes on g2 and this two pawn probably cannot win especially the the king is far so uh, black king would just pick up one of the pawn and the knight would pick up another pawn sacrifice of course and um, and draw the game so it would be probably the draw enough for the winning the tournament however we did, didn't go for exchanging the rooks he play rook on e2 we have king on f5 by navarra knight e4 now we have rook on d1 and knight on c3 attacking the rook rook d3 now we have knight on b1 uh, knight on d5 king c2 attacking um, the rook knight b4 checking and defending the rook king b2 knight d5 and it looks like it's threefold repetition um but we did don't want to draw he want to win because he told like okay i had so good situation i have to win this game so knight a3 and now knight e3 attacking um, the g2 pawn of course for now it's defended we have knight on c4 offering to um, exchange the knight so uh, navarra accept knight c4 bishop c4 and now black actually has the passed pawn so it's quite dangerous but we did wanted to make some you know unbalance the unbalance the um, and the pawn structures and uh, he thought okay i'm gonna be better here we have a4 but it's still draw king c2 attacking the rook now rook b3 cutting the king uh, from the a a file now we have rook on d2 so now the rook can um, harass the king maybe can pick up the pawn maybe can also go from the back back rank and uh, and now here we have rook on b4 so um black actually create own threats attacking the uh, c4 we have king on c3 rook on b3 king on c2 rook on b2 king on c3 rook on b3 and in this position we did didn't go for a draw again he played king on d4 another risky move and he really really want to win now we have a3 rook a2 blocking the the pawn uh, and here king on e6 so this king has to has to stay uh, somewhere between these pawns and and these pawns and here we did uh, push so much that he make a decisive mistake now c5 is losing the game uh, and of course Navarra didn't pick up the the pawn he just pushed this pawn so now Navarra has two passed pawn and um, and they are connected so this is uh now huge drama actually it's a strategy for for Vidit he tried to push so hard so we have g4 h takes on g4 f takes on g4 and now b4 so slowly um, Navarra just push the pawns. Uh, we have g5. Now rook on b2 attacking the uh, the rook. Of course, rook cannot be taken taken because the the pawn would promote. So rook a1 and now a2. So pushing the pawn. Now we have g6. We have b3 and now c6. So now this king actually alone um can't of course control control both of these uh, squares so that's the plan for vidit and uh, actually not enough it's too slow now we have rook on c2 so um black stay behind the the pawn and now king gonna take care of this pawn we have rook on f1 so king actually can't now uh, take care here um but now we have b2 so now it's very close to the promotion and we have g7 so now it's it's almost promoted but now we have rook on g2 and of course the promotion uh, can't be done we have rook on c7 but now 
king gonna you know um, babysit this um, this pawn and you know king uh, babysit this pawn and the rook babysit this pawn so nothing can be done and in this position uh, nobody can believe that but Vidit Gujarati resigned the game so it's huge drama a huge tragedy for him he was one point ahead and he could just draw this game for many 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 times but he didn't do that and and actually he lost and David Navarra said okay that that thing sometimes happen in the chess and then we just learn from them and then yeah we have to go forward and uh, and yeah nothing can be done the only line with, which looks interesting now is rook on f7 with check and protecting both of the pawns but that's not enough king c8 and solving all the problems and now rook on f8 with check uh, actually king on c7 uh, and after uh, you know promoting to the queen queen of course can be taken uh, but now nobody cares about um, these two little guys and they just you know um, promote both of them actually can promote to the queen so of course it's winning for black this is why in this position uh, Vidit Gujarati resigned the game very very unlucky and uh, we have last round where actually Vidit play as black with Jan Krzysztof Duda and Jan Krzysztof Duda just lost to Alireza Firuzia, so he definitely will want to win and last round gonna be very very exciting so um, you know feel free to subscribe click the bell button and uh, to not miss the the games from the last round maybe I will cover one or two games uh, definitely word of that Firuzia also play important game Vitugov uh, who also um, you know he's just behind uh, also gonna play his game and of course Duda uh, with Gujarati um, so very exciting last round everything can happen and uh, and yeah if you like this game press like for some reason if you don't like this game press unlike and leave the comment which games would you like to see in the last round of the Prague Chess Festival 2020 and thanks for watching and see you in the next one